So this is the last week of our series called Vibes. And we have been talking about our vibes, our emotions, and how if we aren't careful, they can take control of us. And since none of us like being controlled, handling our emotions is something, hey, I think we all want to get better at. So as we continue this conversation today, I want to ask you a question. Are you ready? Are you listening? What would you do if you knew you would never get caught and there would be no consequences? Okay, let me say that again. What would you do if you knew you'd never get caught and there would be no consequences? All right, now, I want you to turn to the person next to you and share what you just thought. Just kidding, stop, I'm kidding. Don't, don't talk out loud, okay? Don't say anything. But I imagine that some of you had some stuff come to mind that may have surprised even you. Maybe something popped in your brain and you're like, thank goodness there are no mind readers in here. Because the truth is, for all of us, we all have the potential to think some crazy and even some twisted thoughts. We're just smart enough not to talk about it or not to talk about it out loud, right? We're all experts at monitoring our behavior so that only the good stuff is seen for the most part. And while we've learned as human beings to monitor our behavior, the problem is that we've never really learned how to monitor our emotions, our hearts, where the emotions come from. And like we've talked about in this series, it's important that we learn how to monitor our emotions because our emotions have a big impact on the way we treat ourselves and the way we treat other people. And that, my friends, is a big deal to Jesus, which is why I think what King Solomon said is so important. In a book from the Old Testament called Proverbs, he said this, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Meaning what's most important is what is happening inside of you because what comes out of you comes from your heart. Sure, we can all try to watch our actions, monitor our behavior, but that's not the real problem. The real problem is taking care of what's inside. And let's be honest, and we can all admit that we have some problems on the inside. Am I right or am I right? Like most of us can quickly think of things we've done or said or thought that no one else is allowed to know about because we all have stuff inside of us that's not great. And when that stuff comes out of us and we do or say something that's not great, the result is a different emotion that can end up controlling us. And what I'm talking about is guilt. See, guilt is a loaded word because there's a couple different kinds of guilt. There's false guilt. That's the guilt you feel when you aren't guilty. That's when you feel bad about something you didn't do, or you feel bad about something that wasn't even a big deal. And then there's actual guilt. This is what we're talking about today. This is the kind of guilt you feel when you did something you shouldn't have done, or you said something you shouldn't have said. See, feeling this legitimate guilt isn't a bad thing in and of itself but it becomes a problem when something you've done in the past becomes a part of your identity today. See, let's be clear. Nobody likes to feel guilt, nobody. So instead of doing something about it when we feel it, we stuff it away. And we have messages that we say to ourselves about the thing we feel guilty about. Things like, well, I mean, I wasn't the only one. I'm not the only one who deals with that. I was going through a bad phase. I was having a bad day. It's not my fault. And we tell ourselves these stories to make the guilt less powerful, just so we you know, don't feel it quite as bad. But here's the thing. When we make excuses for our guilt or pretend like it's not a big deal, we actually give our guilt more power. See, think about it. Guilt creates a debt-debtor relationship. In other words, it, it creates an IOU out of a relationship because we have taken something from somebody else. When we hurt someone else, we take things like their reputation, their trust, their self-esteem. And so we owe them that a relationship. We may even say things like, I owe them an apology. See, guilt, debt, debtor. But the thing is, we don't see guilt as a debt to pay back. We experience guilt like a weight. And when we carry around a weight, it throws us off balance, which explains why when we fix a relationship, when we make something right, we may say something like, man, wow, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Now, here's the other tricky thing about guilt. It doesn't just stay with the person we feel guilty towards. Like, think about it. You may feel guilty about how you talk to your stepmom, but then you'll bring it with you and be in a bad mood with your friends at school. See, so the guilt doesn't just stay with your stepmom. When we don't deal with guilt, it grows into anger. Anger at ourselves for behaving a certain way. Anger at not being able to move past it. And all of us know, Anger doesn't stay inside of us. It eventually comes out and it's usually ugly, okay? Now the truth is, we're all guilty of something and we're all in danger of letting our guilt become anger. 
and our anger turning into us being defensive. See, we don't like people pointing out where we may have gotten it wrong. And there's a reason for that. If we own up to our guilt and admit that, hey, what we did wasn't okay, we'll see what we did for what it is, sin. And that leaves us feeling condemned and convicted and judged. In other words, we'll feel bad because we'll see that we did something bad and we can't undo it. We can't unsay that thing or untalk that way about that person or untreat someone that way. Eventually we realize that even though this thing is in the past, it's not completely gone. It's still here as a part of our story. Now, here's the good news. You don't have to be defined by your past and you don't have to deny it either. See, Jesus offers a different way, and that's what we're gonna talk about for the next few minutes. I wanna look at something the Apostle Paul said, and it's important that we know who said this because Paul had more regret and guilt than all of us listening combined, all right? He wasn't just a preacher trying to make a good point. He lived this. He was ashamed of his past. He felt guilty because the early part of his life, before he became known as the Apostle Paul, he was known as Saul of Tarsus. And Saul of Tarsus spent his time hunting down followers of Jesus so that he could arrest them and have them tortured, imprisoned, or killed. He did more than just let it happen, this guy made it happen. So later, when Paul himself becomes a follower of Jesus, even changes his name, it's likely that he had to face the families of people he went after. Like there's no question that he dealt with regret and he dealt with guilt knowing what he had done and remembering the faces of people he had arrested or even killed. But what makes his story so amazing is that he doesn't distance himself from his past. He doesn't run away from it. He doesn't try to hide it, deny it. He doesn't make excuses like, well, you know, that was before I met Jesus, so it doesn't really count. No, instead he told his story and he owned it. And he wrote about it in a letter to Christians living in Rome. And he said this, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the power of sin and death. You don't have to pretend that you didn't do something wrong. You don't have to be condemned. There is freedom in owning up to God what you said or did. When you call it what it is, the weight comes off. You stop running and you stop making excuses and you find freedom. How in the world do we do that? Well, Paul tells us this, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, meaning all the law could do was show us how we got it wrong. It points out the ways we've messed up, but it can't fix anything for us. So Paul goes on, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. Meaning Jesus had no guilt. He didn't do anything wrong. He came and he lived a perfect life. And then he died a criminal's death so that you and I can be free. We have every reason to feel guilty. Jesus has none. And yet Jesus is the one who died. And because of that, because of what Jesus did, we no longer have to be condemned or feel guilty. Think of it this way. Because of Jesus, guilt doesn't have to be the boss of you. Let me say it again. Because of Jesus, guilt doesn't have to be the boss of you. We can live guilt-free. Jesus took it all. It's like he's saying, bring all of your guilt over all the stuff you've ever done. Own it. What you did was wrong. It wasn't okay. We both agree that you messed up and are guilty but you are not condemned. I don't see you that way anymore. And I don't want you to see yourself that way either. I want you to see yourself the way I see you. Paul wraps up the thought by saying this, and so he, meaning God, condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Paul's saying, hey, God has made the relationship between you and him guilt-free. Like you are guilty because you did something you shouldn't have, but you are not condemned. And that guilt doesn't define you anymore. What Jesus did on the cross defines you. Jesus took the guilt on himself and now you are free. And here's the thing, the way Paul writes all of this is a little bit confusing and you've been a little confused by some of this, I'll give you that, but I don't want to miss this because it sounds confusing. 
When you decide to take God at his word, and when you trust that Jesus is who he says he is, he did what he said he was going to do, a few things happen. Number one, you are no longer allowed to condemn yourself or punish yourself. Guilt is not the boss of you. You belong to God, and God says that you are not condemned. So when that voice of shame and guilt tries to weigh you down, you can say, you know what? Jesus took care of that for me. That's not who I am anymore. I belong to Jesus. Number two, your guilt will remind you, but it will not define you. Meaning what you did, it doesn't just disappear or go away, but it isn't who you are. Let your past be the thing that marks a change in you. Let it lead you to show gratitude to God for who you are now and who you're becoming. And number three, okay, and don't miss this, you don't get to condemn others for their mistakes. Listen, when you realize what Jesus has done for your guilt, you understand that he's done the same things for others as well. You don't get to judge, you don't get to hate on, you don't get to criticize others for their mistakes. Your past makes you perfectly positioned to love everyone else despite their mistakes. And number four, you are free to make things right with the person you hurt without excuses or without an expectation of getting something back from them. See, sometimes we think that when we do something wrong, the most important thing for us to do is just pray and ask God for forgiveness and everything is fine. It's not fine. Jesus cares about making it right, not with him, but the person you hurt. So go ahead and pray for forgiveness. That's great, that's awesome. But then go out and make it right with the other person. Whatever you took from them, was it trust? friendship? Was it self-esteem? Own it. And here's the thing, it's possible that your willingness to be humble and approach that person will do more than just keep the guilt from controlling you. It will allow them to deal with the hurt and emotion inside of them that they may not have even known that they had. In fact, what if that's the reason why you're here today? What if someone is waiting on you to make the first move and make things right? What if that's the way forward? What if that's the way out of the weight of guilt? Don't let pride or fear or worry be the thing that keeps you from riding the relationship. Because maybe the best thing you can do to let the guilt vibe go is humble yourself and seek forgiveness from the person you hurt. And look, I get it, that's scary. But remember, as long as we hold on to the guilt, we are letting our past define us. And Jesus came to change that. Our past can remind us, but it will not define us and maybe today is the day that changes for you. Maybe today is the day you really understand that because of what Jesus did for you, you are no longer condemned. Guilt is not in control. Guilt is not the boss of you. That vibe is not going to call the shots. There's no room for the vibes of guilt and shame and embarrassment and pride. Because of Jesus, all of that is gone. So as we head out, let's remember that. Let's pass that same love on to others despite their mistakes as well. Because of Jesus, guilt doesn't have to be the boss of you, and it doesn't have to be the boss of the people around you either.